Excellencies, distinguished delegates and panelists, ladies and gentlemen, good evening. Thank you for coming to this afternoon's side event entitled Best Practices for Maternal Health Care in Africa, which the Permanent Observer Mission of the Holy See is sponsoring, along with the Society for the Protection of Unborn Children, Mater Care International, Culture of Life Africa, Real Women of Canada, and the Campaign Life Coalition. The theme of the 60th session of the Commission on the Status of Women is women's empowerment and the link to sustainable development. One of the most important ways that the international community must help unleash the power of women is through genuine support for women who are mothers. The Universal Declaration of Human Rights affirms that motherhood and childhood are entitled to special care and assistance, but in some circles, the unique value and dignity of motherhood and the essential contributions mothers give to sustainable development through their heroic dedication in raising the next generation is insufficiently acknowledged, appreciated, and advanced. One of the most uh, common forms of discrimination among women today happens, uh, especially in labor situations, with regard to the exercise of their maternity. Sometimes, motherhood is even seen as an antiquated and unwholesome and economically disadvantaged model of a woman's life. True respect for women, however, starts with accepting, indeed reverencing her according to all aspects of her humanity. It involves creating the conditions for her to fully develop according <coughs> to what Pope Francis and his predecessors termed as feminine genius. This expression highlights women's special wisdom in caring for the intrinsic dignity of everyone, in nurturing life, and in developing others' gifts. When women are given the opportunity to thrive in full participation for all their talents and potential, like in peace building and peacemaking, and mediation, the whole of society develops and benefits. All people need to appreciate better the fullness, the full greatness of women, which include not just the gifts and shares in common with men, which there are many, but also the unique gifts that pertain to her as woman, like her capacity for motherhood. Understood, not just as a reproductive act, but also as an enriching spiritual, educational, and affective experience. We all need to recognize the greater burdens placed on women in motherhood and family life, and to rise up in solidarity to help women meet those challenges. Even though parenthood belongs to men as much as to women, parenthood obviously taxes much more the women Everyone in society should be aware of this and show not just particular gratitude and esteem, but assist women in every way possible. Humanity ultimately owes its survival to the choice women make, not just to welcome children, but to raise them to be virtuous and authentically human, to foster their personal identity and develop positive social bonds. None of us here <coughs> would be here would be existing if it were not for our mother's loving choice to welcome us and to provide so much of herself in giving us growth and providing for our needs. One area of the world where the gift of motherhood is deeply, still deeply esteemed and appreciated as a society as a whole is Africa. Pope Francis, as you know, visited Africa visited Kenya, Uganda, and the Central African Republic last November. And uh, among the things he affirmed is the importance of the family and certainly the role of the mother in strengthening the family. So in the United States, it is uh, said, statistics say that more than 80% 
of the health needs of a family is provided for by the mother. So we could just imagine how important the role of the mother is not only in her own health, but also in the overall, overall health of the family. And I'm sure in some other countries, it's even more than 80% or even more than 90%. Today, we will hear from three speakers we have here who have dedicated themselves in a special way to defending, praising, and advocating for mothers and children. We will hear first uh, Dr. Robert Wally, the founder and executive director of Mater Care International, a global association of obstetricians, gynecologists, midwives, and general practitioners dedicated to reducing the high rates of maternity, maternal mortality and morbidity throughout the world. Mater Care is presently doing work in Ghana, Sierra Leone, and Rwanda, and in other places in the world. For 15 years, Dr. Wally also served uh, as a consultant of the Pontifical Council for the Pastoral Care of Health in the Vatican. And I must add that uh, I met Dr. Wally in Haiti when I was papal nuncio there, a short time, just a few days after the earthquake that devastated Port-au-Prince and the surrounding regions in 2010. So in the midst of the sufferings and emergency of women, mothers, and infants who need emergency help, Dr. Wally was a soothing and assuring presence. Thank you for what you did. He went back many times after that. Next, we have uh, Ms. Uh, Obianuju Ekiocha. She's from Nigeria, and she's the founder of Culture of Life Africa that focuses in the promotion of life and of the respect for motherhood through respect of the values and cultures of each people or nation. And finally, we will hear from Ms. Maria Madiz, who is the International Director of the Society for the Protection of Unborn Children based in London. She is a native of Estonia. She coordinates uh, for the society the work of a team of bioethical researchers and also manages a coalition of 26 pro-mother, pro-life, pro-health mother, uh, pro-mother's health organizations. So after their interventions, uh, we will have time for your questions until six o'clock. Next, we have uh, Ms. Uh, Obianuju Ekiocha. She's from Nigeria, and she's the founder of Culture of Life Africa that focuses in the promotion of life and of the respect for motherhood through respect of the values and cultures of each people or nation. Thank you so much, uh, Your Excellency, for uh, hosting this wonderful event and for giving us all the opportunities to come out and share what we have done in the course of our work. Thank you so much, Dr. Wally, for the excellent work that you are doing uh, among the African people. And uh, welcome, everybody, for being here. Uh, now, I just want to shed some light on this particular problem of maternal deaths and maternal mortality uh, from a cult, sort of a, a cultural perspective and a sociological perspective as well. Uh, following what, especially following what Dr. Wally has said from his uh, vast medical experience, uh, it's only right that we should also see how the Africans view uh, this problem, at least as far as my experience goes. Now, to start off, I must put a disclaimer that Africa uh, is made up of 54 countries. I know this is one of the, uh, cr you know, criticisms we get uh, speaking about Africa in one, one brush stroke. Africa is home to more than a billion people. Uh, we, we speak almost 3,000 3, different native languages uh, and thousands of tribes who have uh, thousands of ethnic groups and clans. There are many creeds and uh, there, there are many creeds and, and religious beliefs professed in Africa. Therefore, there is not just one African culture, because I know that's what people might uh, criticize me for in this talk, but please excuse me because we still do have a common thread that runs through uh, various uh, African countries, as far as I know. 
Um, and that is our understanding that human life is precious. Anyone who, uh, even just looking at, at, at some of those slides that Dr. Wally had, you can tell that the Africans surely must then appreciate human life because we do see a lot of deaths, right? There is death everywhere, but we do see uh, a lot of difficulties. And so we consider life precious in most of the African communities. And the, uh, most people would say that they respect life human life from conception, right from the womb, in most of the African communities. Also, motherhood is then considered by extension to be precious as well. Uh, motherhood is seen as a blessing rather than a burden. Uh, and His Excellency did actually allude to that in his opening statement. That one place in the world, and everybody can, can, can attest, many people can attest to this, that one place in the world where motherhood is, is seen as a real blessing, as a real beautiful thing, is in Africa. Of course, everywhere around the world, but particularly among the Africans. We do also believe that uh, motherhood is a major milestone in the life of the woman. So most cultures and most customs across the continent of Africa actually uh, do have something, some way of celebrating the birth of a child. So that is quite indicative of the fact that we hold up motherhood as something really beautiful. Now, these are just some mothers that, you know, that I have seen in the course of my work. And I, and I thought, oh, I th they, sh they look so beautiful and I should share them uh, with you all to see that Indeed, we do appreciate motherhood. Now, speaking about maternal health in Africa, the reality still remains that we have very high rates of maternal mortality across the continent. Uh, there, are, there are a lot of inadequacies. We have gaps. We have limitations, especially when it comes to uh, emergency care and blood transfusion services. Years ago, uh, I was working in the uh, health sector in a, actually a very big hospital in Nigeria where uh, a lot of my work had to do with providing blood transfusions for people, and I was working in the pathology unit. And I can really attest to what, what Dr. Wally has spoken about, that we had so many limitations that at points in time when women were bleeding to death following, following deliveries, that most times we couldn't even do anything. If a woman needed more than maybe one or two units of blood, we couldn't provide for that. If the woman bled a bit more than anticipated, we couldn't provide for that. So by the time I went out to Europe and I started working in the same capacity, it was a big shock to me that we had all that blood bank, you know, filled to the brim with, with, with volu voluntarily donated blood. So that was a big contrast. And I wondered why at the time. Now, we also have very low percentage of births attended by skilled uh, healthcare professionals and very low numbers of healthcare workers, physicians, nurses, and midwives, but 10,000 uh, people in the population. So maternal health indeed then becomes really very important that it should be discussed at different, uh, different platforms. It should be discussed uh, here at the United Nations. And I know it, it comes up all the time with the Millennium Development Goal, with the Sustainable, Develop Sustainable Development Goals. It is good that it, it forms the core of what the, the discussions uh, that, that are being had. Now, where we differ is how the approach with which uh, a lot of the people in the international community believe that Africans should handle maternal deaths. This is a bit of what the, the global uh, map looks like. I got this, this is from World Health Organization, that's from 2015. And anyone can see that very dark uh, patch there. That shows you how, how much women are dying in childbirth in Africa. So that's definitely, without being contested, we have the highest in the world. Now here are some of the maternal, uh, the causes of maternal death as, as World Health Organization has put it out. And, uh, Dr. Wally has also spoken about this, but these are slightly, uh, you know, they are sort of similar figures, but they're slightly different because this is from a different year. 
I don't know if that you can see the pie chart there, but these are four different parts of the world. There is Africa, there's Asia, there's Latin America, and the developed uh, countries down at the bottom there. And it's from the Lancet. So this is the World Health, Ana World Health Organization analysis. Bleeding causes almost 34% of deaths, and then there are other indirect causes. There is sepsis, there is infection, there is hypertensive disorder, HIV, AIDS. So these are all medical causes of obstruct, obstructed labor. 96, more than 96%, I suppose, is caused by the, all, the, all these other different things. That's also another way to look at it. This is for the, these are the global figures because I know someone might, might actually ask, well, it, it, a lot of the literature says 8% is caused by abortions. Uh, but for Africa, it is 3.9%. Uh, now, this is where we differ. The unhelpful solution which is being offered to Africans. When maternal health is being discussed, when maternal mortality is being discussed, these are some of the things, uh, well, in fact, right at the top of that list, this is what is being pushed in Africa the legalization of abortion. It is constantly recommended to us. The different countries, many of the African countries, in fact, right now, are battling to keep the laws they have which protect the unborn children. They are fighting so that they don't have to legalize abortion. But through different platforms, a lot of the West, a lot of the mostly Western international organizations come to our, some of our African leaders, some of the parliaments, and suggest to them that strongly abortion has to be legalized. For what reason? So that maternal mortality can be reduced. It then becomes highly controversial for us it, because it's diametrically opposed to a lot of our shared values, the way we see life, the way we perceive life, how we understand life as being precious and sacred from the moment of conception. This then clashes with these beliefs and these values. So many African communities now, many African countries are actually torn between their core values, their core beliefs, that abortion is actually a, a, a direct attack to human life. This is how many people see it across the different countries in Africa, across the different cultures, that abortion is directly a, an attack directed against human life at its earliest stage. So we are torn between that and the more developed societies and the more developed countries who are suggesting these things to us strongly, who are also donors to the African countries. So one cannot help but ask, is this another form of colonization? Is Africa going back to a time when, when we are going to be told what to do in order to save women's lives? The Holy Father, Pope Francis, came to the United Nations last September and he spoke about what he called the ideological colonization. This was his exact statement. He referred to this as an imposition of anomalous models and lifestyles which are alien to people's identity. These are not my words, these are the words of Pope Francis. And this is exactly where many of the African countries find themselves. And the true fact of it is that there is no real correlation between legal abortion and maternal health. There is rather a real correlation between the standard of the, our health care systems and how women are actually surviving or dying. This is a small comparison. We have Egypt, an African country. Egypt has the lowest maternal mortality rate, one of the lowest maternal mortality rates in Africa. They have 33,000 women dying out of every 100,000, which of course is still unacceptably high, but in Africa, this is actually a really good, well, a really low maternal mortality rate. The World Health Organization back in 2000 released a report that actually rated 191 uh, countries for their healthcare facilities and their healthcare systems. And glow, uh, around the world, 
Egypt was number 63 out of 191. And for the Africans, that's actually one of the best healthcare systems that we had, according to the World Health Organization. Now, the proportion of births attended by skilled health uh, personnel in, in Egypt is 79%. The number of healthcare workers is that they have 28 physicians to 10,000 people. They also have 30, 35 nurses. 10,000 people. Mind you, Egypt also has one of the most restrictive abortion laws in Africa. They do not allow abortion under any circumstance, and yet they have the best maternal health to be boasted of in the continent. Now here is the story of Sierra Leone. Sierra Leone has the highest maternal mortality rate in the world. They have 1,360 women dying out of every 100,000. Their healthcare system also no rated 191 out of 191. So that's not a surprise. That's a direct correlation. The proportions of birth attended by professionals is 63%. The number of the healthcare workers is 0 0.2 physicians to, to, to 10,000 people, two nurses to 10,000 people. These figures have actually come from an African Union Commission, so they're not my figures. These are figures from 2015, so I take it they are reliable. Recently, we had some incidents happen in Sierra Leone that I, I found out about and then I sort of got involved. Last December, Sierra, the Parliament of Sierra Leone voted to legalize abortion, and they passed this bill. We were told that it passed unanimously, and when I started inquiring about it and asking these questions, why do you have to legalize abortion at this time, Sierra Leone? You have just come out of the Ebola crisis. Most of the citizens that I spoke to, people, ordinary citizens that I spoke to, who were not part of the parliament, were actually against this abortion bill. But one of the main reasons that the abortion bill went through was because they were promised, they were told by some commissions in the Western world that, uh, that by legalizing abortion, they were actually going to improve their maternal mortality rate. That is... That is actually deceptive. Abortion, when it's unleashed in Africa, this is what it looks like. We have coerced abortions. We have weakening of marriage and family culture. We have gross medical malpractice. We have abortion-related medical and psychological traumas. We have sexual violence. But the Africans continue to speak out against abortion and against the legalization of abortion. These are the same people from Sierra Leone from the country where abortion was recently legalized. This was taken last month. And their women were saying no, this particular women's group. That's from Ghana. That's from Cameroon. That's from Nigeria. So across the continent of Africa, people continue to choose life and people continue to insist on abortion still being illegal, so that people can protect the unborn. We will always choose life. This is, these are the unmet needs, the real needs of the African women. We need access to real prenatal health care. We need skilled birth. We need care and support after, after birth. These are the non-controversial, this is the non-controversial approach that the Africans expect. This is exactly what will be welcomed by the men, women, men and women of, of Africa throughout the continent of Africa, no matter the region, no matter the religion, no matter the tribe or ethnic group. We want life for the African people and the Africans continue to implore the world to come together and, in, and continue to persist and insist with us that abortion should not be brought to the African people. Thank you. Now we only have uh, around 10 minutes for uh, your questions. I would like to uh, call on the first uh, three questions. Uh,
questions uh, that we could have. I guess I would start uh, over here uh, at the back. I think, sh I, I think she was the first one to, to raise her hand. Uh, please make your question short so that we could uh, go around. First of all, I want to, oh, hello, my name is Daniela. First of all, I want to congratulate you because instead of going for a quick solution like abortion and anticonceptions, you decide to make something beautiful that will help both the mother and the baby. Also, I want to thank you because I know it's not easy what you're doing as a t and as a teenager who is concerned about life, I appreciate it. My question is, how many health centers are you planning to build in the first 10 years and how can we help? Thank you. Thank you very much. Oh, now it works. My name is Mette Giasko. I am from uh, the Danish parliament. I'm a former minister. And um, first allow me to, to express my respect for all the work you do for, for women all over the world and, of course, Africa. Um, I was a bit provoked by the thought of new colonialism. Being from Europe, uh, of course, this hurts me. And so I would like to share a bit because I have been to Africa uh, and I know that there are different countries and I've been to Zimbabwe and Mali and Tunisia and uh, Tanzania and Kenya and Rwanda, a lot of African countries. And I've spoken to a lot of African women. And, and, and my lesson learned from being from a coloni colonialistic uh, uh, society is do no harm allow people to make their own choices. <laughs> and when I've been to Africa, I've spoken to a lot of women, and some women want this, and some women want that. But I think we should allow them to decide for themselves. <laughs> and that, is, that includes freely decide over their own body, their own sexuality, when and how many babies they want, if they want contraception, if they want abortion. We don't have to put it on anybody else. So, so if you want to make sure that you don't start a new colonization, make, let people make their own choices, decide over their own body. Thank you very much. Uh, we'll take... Uh... Uh, the last one, yeah, from a man. <laughs> Thank you. We'll hear for... The, uh, which? Which one? We have three. Here. Oh, great. Okay, the one. So I just, uh, I wanted to make a... Oh, oh sorry, go ahead. <laughs> Hello, greetings. Uh, my name is TJ Williams. Um, I am a uh, candidate for ordination in the American Baptist Church. Um, a member of the Riverside Church here in uh, New York City. Um, and um, my, my statement is in support of uh, the right for women to choose. Um, it is a spiritual, um, a spiritual act uh, because many times in many, through many religious circles, we have taken and have colonized nations um, to impact whole communities uh, to take to to use our influence to take away the right for women to take away the choice the right of choice so give the uh, the panel the right to uh, respond thank you Which one? It's Hello. Um, I'm Dr. Raymond Price. I'm representing the Howard Center for Family, but I'm also the director of the Center for Global Surgery at the University of Utah. And I just want to point out that you've uh, done a, a marvelous job of highlighting the problem and actually identifying the solution. My question will be, how do we encourage people to identify the correct solution moving forward? You identified the prob problem that in the Millennium Development Goals, we did not achieve that. There are still women dying. And you identified the solution, 
by highlighting the things that have been successful in decreasing that. 50% of those solutions involve surgical care. It involves a health system strengthening measure. And I want to point out that last year in May, 194 nations voted unanimously to pass a, a resolution indicating the importance of essential and emergency surgical care. And it directs the, 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 uh, the, the ministries of health around the world and the World Health Organization to target health system strengthening and in putting surgical care into the systems. How are we going to get the Commission on the Status of Women to recognize the solution so that we can start saving lives and meet the goals? Thank you. To answer the question about the number of health centers, I pointed out just uh, what I was speaking about is a question of money. We don't get any funding. What we're suggesting is offering life and hope rather than death and despair. That when you uh, look at the causes of maternal mortality, as I pointed out, 91% of them occur in the last three months of pregnancy during labor and delivery and after it's abortion and birth control are irrelevant. And so what... So the only solution that's being offered is if a mother wants to stay alive, she's got to kill her baby. That's outrageous. That's outrageous. We don't even do that here anymore. That's all I can say. Sorry, I'd like to just address, I'd like to address uh, the lady who had spoken, the Danish lady who had spoken about uh, comparing African women not having the right to choose what to do with her body and it being colonization. It's actually quite amazing how you were able to kind of twist that into shape, uh, to, to that thought. But I must say this to you. Um, I am from a tribe called the Igbo tribe in Nigeria. If I tried to translate in my native tongue what it means for a woman to choose what to do with her body, I couldn't. Most of the African native languages don't even have a way of phrasing abortion to mean anything good. Now, as, a com as communities of people and as societies, where it, it actually then becomes colonization, a neo-colonization is that people from the Western world come to Africa and try to give us these kinds of language that we could never translate into our native tongue. They tell us that it actually can mean something for a woman to do something with her body, which isn't really morally uh, bad. But anyway, the first thing that we have to think of and remember is that as communities, which was one thing I highlighted right at the beginning, culturally, most of the African communities actually believe by tradition, by their, their cultural standards, that abortion is a direct attack on human life. So for anybody to convince a woman that abortion is good... Sorry. So I'm sorry. So for anybody to be able to convince any woman in Africa that abortion is actually a good thing and can be a good thing, you first of all have to tell her that what her parents and her grandparents and her ancestors thought her what is actually wrong. You're going to have to tell her that they have always been wrong in their thinking. And that, madam, is colonization. We are, uh, me. we are bound by our contract uh, with the uh, manage, uh, conference management of the UN that we must end at 6 o'clock because there is another event. I would like to give the last, uh, to Maria, the last word among the panelists, and then we will. Uh, I, I believe that Uju's last word was, uh, was absolutely um, um, 
Splendid. I really don't have anything to add to that. Thank you, Drew. Thank you, Dr. Wally, for everything that you do for mothers in Africa and their children. Thank you. Thank you very much. We have uh, always believed that, you know, these are very difficult questions uh, and controversial questions, and it is good. I am very glad that you have participated in the discussion, and there, would be, there will be other times. And thank you very much for your active participation, your interest, uh, and unfortunately, we are running out of time. So good evening, and again, best wishes to all of you. Thank you.